Psalm 23 verse 1 he said the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he maketh me to lie down in green pastures he leadeth me besides the still waters he restoreth my soul he leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest mine head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Somebody say Amen. amen. This evening I speak on the subject living on purpose dash the benefits the benefits of living on purpose and our objective is actually to understand the advantages of living in the purpose of God for our lives when I say living on purpose I'm referring to living in the plan in the will and in the purpose of God for our lives. The perfect plan, the perfect will, the perfect purpose of God for our lives. Romans chapter 12 verse 1 said, I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of the living God of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice wholly acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service and be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Please those children Living on purpose, living in the perfect plan, in the perfect purpose, in the perfect will of God. There are three things or four things I want to, to address as we proceed. Number one, the best place to live on earth is in the center of God's will. The best place, the center of God's will for one's life. The best place to live on earth is not in Europe, it's not in America, it's not in a presidential palace, it is in the center of God's will for a person's life. Second, the best thing to do in life is what God wants you to do with your life. That's the best thing to do. It's not the highest paying job or job in a particular place. The best thing to do in life is what God wants you to do with your life. Thirdly, the best form of success in life is success in the direction of God's will for one's life. A person can be said to be successful 
if he is succeeding in the direction of God's will for their lives. It's the best form of success in life. What is the meaning of that? That leads us to number four. The worst form of failure in life is the failure to be and do what God wants for one's life. The best form of failure in life is the failure to be, the failure to do what God wants one to do with their lives. It's not just failure in an exam. Finally, number five. Another form of failure in life is success in the wrong endeavor. Success in the wrong endeavor is failure. Succeeding in what you are not meant to do at all is a failure. In the eyes of people, a person may have succeeded. But in the eyes of God, they failed. If I stopped here, I've already over preached today. The best place to live is in the center of God's will for your life. The best thing to do is what God wants you to do with your life. The best form of success is success in the direction of God's will for your life. The worst form of failure is the failure to be and do what God wants for your life. And that form of failure in life is success in the wrong endeavor. When I mean, and when we talk about the plan of God, and we talk about the purpose of God, when we talk about the will of God, it encompasses everything. Who am I? Who am I marrying? Who am I living with the rest of my life? Because that will influence how successful your, your assignment can be. It includes what is my career? What line? What do I, where do I pour my life's energy? And then it includes where? Where? There are people living in America have no business to be there. There are people living somewhere they have no business being at all. So this all encompasses the perfect plan and purpose of God. The Lord is my shepherd means I am in the center of his will. The Lord is my shepherd means I don't have a choice of my own. The Lord is my shepherd means I have committed the, my future into his hands. The Lord is my, 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 my shepherd means I do not have any control about where I'm going and where I'm ending. The Lord is my shepherd means I am in the center of his plan, his will, and his purpose for my life. And when that is the case, what are the benefits of being in the plan, in the purpose, and in the will of God? Number one, is supernatural supply or you might call it divine provision let's take it like that divine provision i shall not want he maketh me to lie down in the midst of supply divine Purpose guarantees divine provision. The leading of God and lack in life don't coexist. Being led by God and suffering lack in life, they are mutually exclusive, diametrically opposed. God will lead you into the career that has your money. He will lead you into the profession that carries your provision. He will lead you into the assignment that has your consignment. 
apart from lack of covenant practice, a major cause of scarcity, shortage, and empty-handedness is people facing directions that God did not send them. People trying to labor in a field that God did not allocate them. Divine provision. I went to preach in a country in Africa last year and I returned back from that journey. They gave me an honorarium in foreign currency. I was not aware. I did not remember where I kept it. I traveled all the way back home. And it did not cross my mind one day. Did they give me any honorarium? How much was it? It didn't cross one day. Then my, my wife was packing our hand luggage this year. <laughs> Today. <laughs> and you saw, ah, this, uh, this looks like an uh, envelope from that place that we went for program. This looks like uh, the offering. I say, eh, I'm not aware. I'm not aware. It, there is saw another envelope from another place. I'm not aware. Because I, I, I'm so lost in my assignment that I am not struggling for consignment. It doesn't cross my mind. I went to preach in a ministry in, in Europe. The bishop called me after about three months. He said, have you received our honor yet? What about reimbursement for flight, um, ticket and all that? Because we paid our airfare to go. Have you been reimbursed? And have you received? I said, I'm not aware. Please let your people communicate with my secretary. Because I didn't come there so that you can pay me. You will, you will do what you are meant to do. But the person who sent me on that assignment, he pays me. And he pays very well. Am I communicating? Anytime you see people struggling, if you are in the wrong business, the struggle for supply continues. If you are in the wrong pursuit, the struggle continues. But if it is Baba who is leading you, if he leads you into the sale of crayfish, you will be a billionaire there. If he leads you into the sale of scrap metal, just be on the road and be gathering anywhere you see metal that is rough. Gather them. If he leads you there, you will be, you will be no table there. Just ensure that you are in the center of his will. Take your seat. Divine provision. Number two is divine guidance. He leadeth me. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Divine guidance is a constant where divine purpose is followed divine guidance from level to level face to face invest divest put in money here pull it out now why because he knows that that thing is about to crash tomorrow divine guidance you are in the assignment that God wants you to be he will keep on guiding you. When Elisha, Elijah stood in the purpose of God and said there should be no rain in Israel, God led him to the brook. In Genesis, in 1 Kings chapter 7, 17, verse 3 and 4, he 
told him, go and hide yourself by the brook Cherith before Jordan. In verse 4, it shall be that you shall drink of the brook. The next verse, then the brook dried. And God said, all right, your assignment here is over. Move. You are in the midst of my purpose. So I am going to assist you from step to step. Level to level. But just ensure that you are in the overall purpose. Divine guidance. Which is a guard against disasters of destiny. Divine guidance. Number three is divine rescue and restoration. He said he restored my soul. That is, if you are in the midst of his purpose, when you are about to make the wrong move, or even you have made the wrong move, he will pull you back. You took the wrong step, he says, step back there. He restored my soul. I am not perfect. I am, but I am in his purpose. <laughs> I don't know everything, but I know him. He restored my soul. He rescues me. I say, Lord, here am I. Use me. Almost married the wrong husband. He said, No. He restored my soul. Almost gave money to 419. He said, No. He restored my soul. He restored my soul. Divine rescue and restoration. And this restoration includes even the restoration of your health and your system. He continuously services you in his purpose. But four is divine preservation. Yet though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff they comfort me. I will fear no evil. Divine preservation. Divine protection. It was from God's servant, Bishop Uyedeko, I heard that when you are on course, you cannot be cursed. When you are on track, you cannot be trapped. Follow his track for your life and you won't jam the trap of the enemy follow his course for your life and you will run into the curse of the adversary divine preservation inside the purpose of God for your life is your safety inside the inside the place God has for you is your protection Divine preservation. Every time people step outside of God's plan, they step into disaster. Every time people step out of God's purpose, they open the door to danger. Number five, divine presence. For thou art with me. Thou art with me. Divine presence. The presence of God follows the purpose of God. The presence of God follows the purpose of God. When God guides, he guides. And when he guides, he also goes. Did you hear what I said? When God guides, he guards. He guards those he guides. And he goes with those he guides. When he guides you on the way to go, he guards you. And when he guides you, God is the only one who will not tell you go there and leave you to go in your power. When he says go there, he goes with you. He told the disciples, go into all the world and preach the gospel. And the Bible says, and they went, and he went with them. Eh? Go into all the world. Mark chapter 16, verse 15 and 16. And he said unto them, go into all the world. Go, go into all the world, preach the gospel. 
and these signs shall follow them. And they thought he was only sending them. And in verse 20, they now said, and they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord walking with them. With them. He said they should go, he went with them. He is the only one who will tell you to go and not watch you go on your own. Human beings may say go and they watch who you are, how you will fare. But he tells you go and he goes. Divine presence. If God sends you into the world of politics, even if there are tigers and dragons there, he goes with you in the arena. If God sends you into the military and he said that is where you be, no terrorist can fail you, can fail you, can, can, can bring you down. If God sends you into the business world, irrespective of the corrupt and sharp practices, you can go in and come out clean. Divine presence. Is God speaking to somebody here? Say amen. So divine provision, divine guidance, divine rescue and restoration, divine preservation, divine presence, divine celebration. Number six, divine celebration. He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup runs over. When you follow his purpose, you enjoy celebration. When you follow your purpose, you enjoy toleration. In his purpose for you, you are celebrated. In your purpose for yourself, you are tolerated. When you follow his purpose, you, are, you effortlessly end as a celebrity. When you follow your purpose, you end as a liability. It's a matter of choice. There are people today Who outside of God's purpose would have been known for any reason? Having trained as a medical doctor and I received the call to step fully into this assignment that I am doing now with the medical knowledge and medical experience and medical everything still are, are available. I'm still currently current <laughs> with my medical things. If I wasn't doing this, I was in one hospital somewhere as a um, professor of ear, nose, and throat, or professor of neurosurgery or something. Some people may be aware of my impact, but that is where it may stop. But when I agreed, and I said I am coming full swing, he said then the whole world can be your parish. Am I communicating? You don't lose going all the way with God. It may appear like a loss to some people, but you don't lose nothing going all the way with God. Divine celebration. To follow that line of thinking, I will now call number seven, divine unctionization. In bracket, you can put fresh oil. When you, you, you stay in his purpose, your head cannot lack the oil. In his purpose, the oil is fresh. He didn't say, thou anointed me with fresh oil. He said, thou anointest. You anointed me. You are anointing me. You will anoint me. That is present continuous tense. Thou anointest me. My head is wet and soaked with oil. As I stay in your purpose. When you step out of God's purpose, you run out of oil. Every pastor and every preacher who decides to do something that God didn't ask him to do dries up in a short time. Every child of God who stepped into what God did not ask them to step into, they dry up in a short time. I've seen people, 
that were highly, highly anointed. Some people, God gave them a whole city, a whole state uh, with great unction and great impact. And they decided that uh, maybe that other city is maybe better for them than this one. And they moved themselves out. I've seen many examples. Not one, not two, not three. They moved themselves out of purpose. And as they moved themselves out of purpose, they moved themselves out of oil. Voice is lost. Impact is lost. Where they left is not working. Where they went is not working. Somebody say amen. That will never be your portion. It's divine unctionization. Number eight, he said, I call it divine goodness and mercy. That is, in the purpose of God, your world will see that God is good. If people don't know how good God is, when they see you doing what God wants you to do, it will be confirmed. The goodness of God in every ramification of the world is the privilege of those who follow God's guidance and purpose for their lives. Somebody say amen. Number nine, divine establishment and planting. You become, you are divinely established and divinely planted. Or let me call it like this, divine establishment and stability. God divinely establishes you. I want to take you from this scripture who's in 2 Samuel chapter 7 verse 10. 2 Samuel chapter 7 verse 10. It says, moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel. Now, whether that is a place, like a city, like an address, like an occupation, whatever it is, but that is my place for them. And I will plant them that they may dwell in a place of their own and move no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them anymore. As before time, provided they are planted in where I want them to be planted. When you decide to stay in what is God's place for you, in that place you are you are stable, you are landlord there. Uh, in your in your God ordained career, in your God ordained profession, in your God ordained vocation, you are landlord there. When you are a territorial commander there. Am I communicating at all? You are, you are just, you full ground there. You occupy space there. He said they cannot move anymore. I will plant them. When people run from business to business, vocation to vocation, one thing to another is a proof of lack of understanding of what God wants them to do with their lives. Am I communicating at all? I will establish them there. I will plant them there. Uh, you, are, you, are, you are a territorial commander where God wants you to be. Somebody say amen. When I was going into ministry, already my wife and I, we had placement at the University of London. Hammersmith Hospital for postgraduate and probably practice. In fact, my, my, my wife's father was a University of London visiting professor. Professor of, gas, of physiology and gastroenterology. So he, he secured us the placement there. But at that same time, the calling of God came to go fully into ministry. And somebody who was aware of this situation at that time said, even if God called you, do it there. It's something like, is it London you don't want to go? Is it London? 
Nigeria. You see London, you say you want to stay in Nigeria. That professor, Polak, wrote us letters twice. First time, next time, say, ah, we are still waiting for you. Have you ever seen such a thing? We are professor writing you. You see, when the devil wants to deviate you from God's purpose, the system will cooperate very well. The system will cooperate very well to make you to make you miss it. The temptation will be very temptatious. <laughs> professor Oibo, professor woman, wrote, written, writing letter by her own hand. A second time, we are waiting for you. Are you coming? One year has passed. What's happening? <laughs> the man said. Even if God says you should do pastor, do it in London. Who told you that London is, is, is better than Nigeria to do anything? There are some people from London here. Ask them. Before anybody give you one pound in London, only God knows what you did for them. Lady in London, here you can confirm when when somebody say take one pound. Abba. Take your seat. Now we didn't go. We decided to remain at home where God said He has called us. But today, Londoners and Londonites travel to come to meet us here. She's from the UK here now. There are a couple of people from the UK now. She is from Canada, seated right there. Are you following what I'm saying now? Last time we went to London, the meeting was overwhelmed. The first hall we used overflowed. Next time we moved to the three times the size of the other one, people were standing inside winter. We'll be going back in April for a bigger meeting. You see, so it's not a matter of what looks good physically. It's a matter of what God, what is God saying? Divine establishment and stability. And finally, number 10 is divine leading unto righteousness. I skipped that in Psalm 23. Divine leading unto righteousness. I put it last on purpose. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness. If I follow his will and follow his plan for my life, he assists me to do what is right. I, I'd like to read it from the Living Bible Version. It's very sweet there. Psalm 23, read verse 2 and 3. When God, Psalm 23, verse 2 and 3. Psalm 23, verse 2 and 3, the Living Bible. Because the Lord is my shepherd, I have everything I need. He lets me re rest in the middle grass and leads me beside the quiet streams. He gives me new strength. He helps me to do what honors him the most. That's right. The New Living Translation of verse... 3 verse 2 3 he leads me to do what honors him most listen to this when god he renews my strength he, he guides me along right paths bringing honor to his name If you are in his plan and in his will, it is easy for you to move without consistent confrontation with compromise. This building that, that, that um, God finished for himself now, there is not one CC given to anybody as bribe 
to facilitate nothing. Not, not one cc. There are people who cannot finish a duplex without a lot of bribes. Am I communicating? You can't even look at our eyes and ask for bribe. Am I communicating at all? When you follow anything that is bringing you into too much compromise, find out, is this God? You hear this? Anything that, see, some people join the army by hook or crook. They change their date of birth, change their state of origin, change everything, and, they, and then they have problems from the scratch. They keep on jamming rock. They keep on jamming. They keep on. They have problem all along. I, I know somebody. I think he was from Bemis State or from some state. He claimed that he's from Kwara State. Oh man, he just, just, just. I knew of another one who was so from one state of uh, the country somewhere and very crooked. He wasn't, he forced him, he forced his way there. Just forced himself there by force. They sent him to Liberia. He didn't return home. He didn't return home. Not alive. He didn't return home. Anything you have to be crooked to succeed at, find out it's likely it is not of God. Anything you have to do, there is nothing that is compulsory in this life. Don't say I must become a soldier by all means, or I must become a doctor by all means, or become this by all means. Find out is that what God wants you to become? And you are trying to bribe to become it, you are trying to compromise. Okay, uh, they say you must have a relationship with the lecturer or with the person, and you say, okay, No problem, all I want is to become so and so by all means. Who said that? That is the pathway planned for you by the enemy. If it is God, it delivers you from pits of compromise. And even if the compromises come and you refuse to bow, no consequence. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. No consequence. But if you are not in the if you are not if you are not in the right path and the compromises come and this and you say no I can't give bribe who cannot give bribe you get out of here when you are in his purpose he assists you to stand straight take your seat when you are in his purpose he assists you that relationship where the man say he wants to have immorality with you first if you confirm it very well God is not in it it is not God who wants you to marry a man who wants to sleep with you first it's not God it can't be God marriage is honorable in all the bed is on the fire it's yourself who wants to give yourself that, that husband or that wife Am I communicating? I mean, if you are on that part of purpose, if you meet the right man, he will protect your dignity. He will protect your decency. He will assist you to maintain your conviction. If you say, this is what I don't want to do, say, I won't assist you to, to break it. He will assist you to maintain your, your spirituality, your integrity, and vice versa. Call that girl the person you want to marry and is heavily temptatious. Every time she comes to visit her at home, seductive spirits are left behind. You were not struggling before you, you started courtship. You are now struggling. You started dreaming some bad dreams with some women in the dream. You wake up in the morning messed up. And this started since you've, you say you want to marry. You find it out. Is this, good? Is this of God? So there are things that can confirm. When God leads, the pathway is the path of peace. Is the path of righteousness. You may not have plenty money, but there is plenty peace. There is plenty peace. You may not have plenty of anything, but there is plenty peace. And there is plenty assistance to do the right thing. There is plenty assistance to do the right thing. Beloved brothers and sisters, 
whatever you do, live on purpose. I married in the will of God by his grace. I have not been troubled by wife problem for 26 years this year. Because there are people before you can come and say you want to start preaching, you think of home. Trouble is waiting. Tie rapper. Eyes like tiger. See, let's continue from where we stopped yesterday. So that is what I'm saying. Now we have to continue. It's a blessing, no? Many of us, you don't know, you don't know that what you have is a blessing until you see the opposite. Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? It is the pathway of peace. It's the pathway of tranquility. In rounding up tonight, I have three counsels. Number one, ensure that the Lord is your shepherd. Because he will not guide anyone who is not his sheep. Ensure that the Lord is your shepherd. Ensure you are his sheep. Because he said, my sheep hears my voice. John chapter 10 verse 18. No, that was not John. My sheep hear my voice and I lead them. 10.27 My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Be his sheep. Be born again. And not just born again, but be his sheep in character. He separates the, the goats and sheep. Not everybody in church is sheep. Be a sheep. You know when they say, look at this goat, it's a, a more terrible insult than sheep. Sheep speaks, sheep speaks of humility. Sheep speaks of followership. It speaks of sheepishness. Goat is naughtiness. <laughs> Goat is terrible naughtiness. <laughs> I saw somebody dragging, I, was, I think a goat on the road the other day. He refused. He refused. <laughs> <laughs> God, it's nothing else. Be his sheep. Number two, ensure you follow his guidance for your life. This life is not a rehearsal for another. Don't gamble with it. Marital decisions, career decisions. Relocation decisions. That there is immigrant visa for Canada doesn't mean Canada is where to go. That all your brothers are in the UK or in, the, in America doesn't mean that is where to go and live. And there are people who have put themselves under this kind of pressure. Where you have a husband in Nigeria, wife in America, or wife in, a, in Nigeria, husband is in America. They are looking for paper from, for, for them to join us. I haven't seen a satanic arrangement like that. I can't be in one place and my wife can be in another place even for four weeks. Are you following what I'm saying here today? I don't know the kind of leading that God will do. Whatever God has joined together, let not green card put us under. Rubbish is that? It's not a godly arrangement at all. People with their wife around them are having temptation. Belente. <laughs> People with their, with their husbands and wife around. Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? It's not a correct... And it's all pressure to live abroad. Pressure to live in UK. Pressure to live in Canada. Pressure to live somewhere. It's not correct. 
I heard of a, a professor from here of an anesthesiology, big doctor, went there and started to, because there was no job, no paper, nothing. He went down and said, um, he started school from nursing, school of nursing to become a nurse. And then remained there for almost 17 to 18 years. Husband is here, children are here, she can't return back, they can't join her. If the people here apply for visa, they will suspect them. That is because they are, the wife is there, they want to run and go and join the wife. If she wants to go back, come back home, she cannot return because there is no paper. Is that life? Is that life? Is God speaking to anybody here? Don't, don't, don't force yourself. There is, don't force yourself to do because everybody is doing. Don't force yourself. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You will not miss road. You will not miss road. Take your seat. Those of us who are outside there that I'm talking to, um, that I'm talking, please, I don't have anything against you. In case you are living out there and you say, Pastor is preaching against you. No, no, no. There are people who are legitimately there. But to carry yourself from here and have to crookedly organize a marriage that does not exist to get paper, or declare yourself a refugee. <laughs> and then you are a refugee for life. That identity is on your head in the realm of the spirit. You are coming, angel, say refugee, coming. A child of destiny in your country, a destitute in another place. It will never be your portion. It will never be your portion. You can succeed very well here. Then travel anywhere in the world you want at any time. Anywhere at any... Do you know that if you have enough money, you can, you, you can buy citizenship? Yes. Yes. Even in the Bible, Paul the Apostle said, I didn't buy this citizenship. I am a freeborn Greek. You have some good cash. 500,000, 100,000 to 500,000 pounds or dollars. They give you a business visa or a residential visa. That is, you have enough money. We don't suspect you. They give you residential permit with every, everything that goes with it. And you can travel in and out anytime, anywhere. Amen. You will make it. Say it louder. Amen. Say the Lord will say amen. Lift your right and say, I shall succeed in the name of Jesus. Ensure. Don't just take a risk. Ensure you follow his plan. You follow his will. You follow his purpose. Right. Am I meant to go and live there? They say there's opportunity there. Is that where you are sending me to? Because you have just one life. I have just one life to live. And then this one life you spend 25 years of it. Missing road. That is one quarter of a whole lifespan. In case you are going to live for 100 years. And if it's 70 something years. Then you have finished one third of your life. Missing road. <laughs> you will never be. That will never be your portion. Ensure he is your shepherd. Ensure you follow his guidance. And finally ensure you remain in his house forever. Ensure you remain in his house forever. Ensure you remain in his house forever. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. When you are positioned and located in his house, road message is not your portion. 
road what? Message. The pro process of missing road is called message. When you are in his house, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever, you are not permitted to miss road. It's a new day for you. The presence of God itself guides your life and your destiny. Stand upon your feet with a shout of praise and a shout of victory. Give him the praise and give him the honor and give him the adoration. Worship him, honor him, adore him. Magnify him. Father, we praise you. Father, we honor you. Father, we adore you. Blessed be your name. Glory to your name. Worship to your name. Adoration to your name. Father, we give you the praise. Father, we give you the honor. Father, we give you the adoration. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master.